Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on importing from and linking to other data sources. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll begin with the aim of this tutorial, which is to create a pivot table based on five tables, all taken from completely different places. We'll have a brief look at the data formats that the Power of Pivot supports, and then we'll dive into the creating the tables themselves. We'll look at linking to Excel workbooks, and then importing Excel workbooks from the hard disk. We'll look at pasting tables in from the clipboard and importing tables from Microsoft Access, and then look at importing data from Analysis Services cubes. And finally, we'll create the relationships to glue the five tables together and use this to create our final pivot table. So let's get started. I thought we'd begin this tutorial by having a look at where we want to get to by the endpoint, which is a pivot table summing the total quantity by region. And there's the underlying tables listed on the right hand side. Big deal, you may think. We've done all that already. Well, not quite, because if you look in Power Pivot at the underlying tables, they're actually coming from five different sources, respectively from left to right, the clipboard, imported from an Excel workbook, imported from an Access database, linked to an Excel file, and imported from an Analysis Services cube. So you'll definitely be learning something new in this tutorial. I put a link on the YouTube page giving where to get the files from. You'll be taken to a folder or files like this. The only thing I haven't tried to do is deploy the Analysis Services cube. So when you come to the Analysis Services bit, you can use this Excel workbook instead. That's the aim of what we're going to do. Let's begin by looking at the data sources and formats supported by, by um, Power Pivot. Before we begin creating our pivot table, I thought we'd have a quick look at the different data sources which Power Pivot supports. They're contained in these three buttons on the Power Pivot ribbon. So you can get information from a database, either from SQL Server, from Microsoft Access, or from an Analysis Services Cube or another Power Pivot workbook. You can get it from a data service, including from the Windows Azure Marketplace, and you can get information from other sources. And you can see here a full list of all the sources supported by Power Pivot. It looks pretty impressive until you start working with Power Query, which is an even more impressive list. The really weird thing about it is that Excel and text files come right at the bottom of the list. You'd think they'd be more important than that. So those are the sources. The ones we're going to show in this tutorial are as follows. We're going to look at Access. We're going to look at it getting information from Excel in two different ways, by linking and by importing. We're going to look at getting information from the clipboard, which will involve clicking the paste tool. And we're going to look at getting information from an analysis services cube. So what we'll do is begin with Excel. The first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is to link to an Excel workbook. To do that, open up the file called stores.xls. You can get to this from the link provided on the YouTube page. And you should see a list of all the stores. This isn't a table in Excel at the moment, it's just a rectangular block of data. You can see that because visually it looks fairly unexciting. And if you go to the Formulas tab on the ribbon and go to Name Manager, you can see there's no range name listed for the table there. We'll come back to that shortly. To turn this into a table so that we can link to it from within Power Pivot, what you can do is go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and choose Table. Pressing Ctrl T does the same thing. What it will now do is confirm your table has got headers. That's important so that it picks up on these column headers. I can choose OK, and you can see visually that it's become a table. You can also see if you go back to the Formulas tab and click on Name Manager, that the table range name has appeared there. And this little symbol to the left of it denotes what sort of a range name it is that it's actually referring to a table in Excel rather than just a, a block of data. What I can now do is go to the Design tab and choose a better name for that. So I'm going to call it TBL Store rather than Table 1 and press Return. Now that I've got a table in Excel, I can link to it in Power Pivot as follows. If you go to the Power Pivot tab, you can choose to add it to your data model. And what it will do is transfer you to Power Pivot and create a table based on the Excel workbook. And that will show up either in data view or diagram view and look to all intents and purposes like any other table in Power Pivot, with possibly the one exception that there's a symbol to the left of it down at the bottom here showing that it's a linked table. I said it will behave exactly like it. There's actually possibly one exception, which is this. 
If you rename this table, so if I'm going to call it store, and then create a pivot table based on it, you would expect the table name I've just chosen to come in, but you can see it still refers to it as TBL store. It appears to me to be the case that the only way you can change a table name is by changing it in Excel. So what I'm going to do is change it to store there. And now if I go back to my pivot table, you can see it's actually updated. But apart from that quirk, this will behave just like any other table. What you can also do in Power Pivot is you can go to the linked table tab and you can choose to update the selected table. And what that will do is automatically bring in the latest data. You can also choose the update mode, either as automatic or manual. Automatic means changes will automatically be brought in. Manual means you'll have to manually refresh. So that's how you can link to an Excel workbook. What we're going to do now is to import data from Excel rather than link to it. I think my preference is to import data. I don't like the fact that in this workbook, the data is actually stored in the same workbook. To import data like this, you go to From Other Sources on the Home tab of the Power Pivot ribbon. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom to find Excel, click on Next and click on the Browse button to find the file. We're going to import a list of towns, so choose towns.xlsx and choose Open. The first row contains column headers. It always will, and why that box isn't ticked in Power Pivot by default, I don't know. We can then choose Next, and from this point onwards, it will behave exactly like a SQL Server or any other table. So I'm going to give it a friendly name. I'll call it Town instead of Towns. Not much of a change, I'll admit. And I can preview and filter it to decide what rows and columns I want to import. I'm actually going to bring everything in. When I've finished, you can click on Finish, and what it will do is import all that data. It appears in Power Pivot, and I challenge you to tell me whether that came from Excel or SQL Server or any other data source. Power Pivot is agnostic about where its data comes from. The next thing we're going to do is to paste some data into Power Pivot, which is one of my favorite things to do in the software. The file we're going to use is a file called regions.docx. If you double click on that, it will take you into Microsoft Word. And what you can then do is select that entire block of data and copy it to the clipboard. When you go back into Power Pivot, you can then paste. What's going to happen when you click on the Paste tool? Well, amazingly, it detects the fact that it's a table, comes up with the field headers and the actual rows of data, and it gives you an opportunity to rename the table. So I'm going to call mine Region. You can then choose OK, and it will automatically create a table based on that. OK, there won't be any link back to the source data, but it's still pretty impressive. I've got three of my five tables. The fourth one is going to come from Microsoft Access. To see that, if I go to Windows Explorer, I can double click on the file called geography.accdb and it will open it up in Access. There's a single table called TBL Center, and if I double click on that, you can see that it contains five column headings and 386 rows. What I'll do is close all that down, and then I'm going to bring that into my Power Pivot data model. You can do this in exactly the same way as for SQL Server. So I'm going to bring information from the database. I'm going to choose From Access. I'm going to browse to my file, double click on it to bring it in. If there's a username and a password, you'll need to provide that at this point, but I don't have such a thing. So I'm just going to go to Next. I can then choose the tables. I've only got one, and I'm going to give it a friendly name. And as you can see, it's now going to behave exactly as when I import it from SQL Server, or for that matter, from Excel off the clipboard. I can then click on Finish and choose Close, and I've brought in my list of centers. The fifth and final table in our data model is going to be the most ambitious. It's going to come from an Analysis Services cube. Now, I haven't provided this cube, so you could complete the example by just using the Transactions Excel workbook, which I provided. What I'll do is demonstrate in the tutorial how you get it from an Analysis, an analysis Services cube, a word I wish I could actually pronounce properly. So I've deployed a cube to SQL Server Management Studio, and you can see that it's got three dimensions, geography, class, and calendar, and it's got a measure group. What I'm going to do is to use this cube to create a table within my Power Pivot workbook. To do that, the first thing I need to do is go to From Database, and I need to say I'm getting my information from Analysis Services. I need to log on to my server, 
It's actually a named instance called SQL 2012 and log on to my database called MAM. I'm not that good at MDX and I certainly don't feel like typing in a full statement. So what I'm going to do is use the design button to choose what I want to build. I'm going to take the store field and I'm going to take from the measures group I'm going to take the quantity. And that will give me two columns, giving the store ID and the quantity. When I choose OK, it will generate the MDX expression. I can give my table a name. I'm going to call it a transaction summary so that I can refer to it by a more meaningful name. And then choose finish and it will import the 419 rows in this case. You can see it's going to look like any other table. What I'm going to do though is to just rename the, the columns. So I'll call the first one store ID and then I'll call the second one quantity. And that completes my five tables. What I now need to do in the final part of this tutorial is link them together and create the pivot table. Before I can link my tables together, there's actually one more thing I need to do. If you go into data view, you can see that the store ID is left aligned. What I need to do is change the data type of it to a whole number so that I'll be able to link it to the integer store ID field in the other tables. What I can then do is go back to diagram view and using the principle of joining the child to the parent exp I explained in an earlier tutorial, I'll say that the store ID here matches the store ID in the store table. The center ID matches the center ID in the center table. The town ID matches the town ID in the town table. And the region ID matches the region ID in the regions table. Don't you just love the way the power pivot bends over backwards to make sure that the lines don't actually cross the tables? Plus you get the nice blue glowing effect. In all honesty, I think I probably need to tidy this up. That looks a bit better. What I can now do is create a pivot table. I'll put it on a new worksheet. And what I can do is choose to display the region name and the quantity. And that figure 19016, take it from me, is exactly the same as we had earlier. So it's successfully showing the total quantity for each regions. But it's worth having a quick look back at the uh, Power Pivot data model, just to un underline the fact that these five bits of information came from five completely different places. But once they're imported into Power Pivot, you'd never know it. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.